from That's August. Um, and thank you all for coming in. Uh, thank you for the work you did to get uh, the legislation through and for you all being here um, as the Electoral Commission. It's far too long coming. Um, <clears throat> so it's great that we're having this discussion. And you have an enormous responsibility. Our democracy is under attack, like democracy is being rivaled by autocracy um, all around the world. And here, our democracy is under attack on a daily basis. And I don't think any of us should be casual about that or blasé about it or not take that serious. Um, so the responsibility on all of you to um, protect our democracy and ensure it stands up to serve our state is enormous. Um, and I, I, I take all of the contributions in the discussion we've had so far about the campaigning elements, and I think they're really important, all this discussions around the postering and certainly the online activity um, is hugely important, but I guess we'll wait for uh, the amendments four and five and we'll come back to that discussion. Uh, the, the integrity of the ballot box and what goes into it and what comes out of it is really important. And the register of electors is what determines supposedly what goes into the box. Um, so how many register of, elect of electors are there? 31? 31 county councils, 31 uh, register of electors. And of that then there's various categories of electors. And I suppose from the Commission's perspective, you're going to set yourselves a task or you have a task of increasing voter participation. Um, I think that's a laudable task. I think there's uh, a lot of some voter participation that is more valuable than others, obviously, um, but the integrity of the voter participation is incredibly important. So of the 31 register of electors that are currently in place, what analysis has been done of those 31 register of electors to determine the veracity and the integrity of those registers from which then you'll measure voter uh, participation, increased voter participation. And then in terms of the operation of the polling stations, and, and we discussed this when the legislation was going through, the polling stations are manned by um, presiding officers uh, who are appointed by the county sheriff. Uh, I'd like you to clarify what the qualifications are for the people, the officers, who actually operate those polling stations. There are my two questions to start with. Well, just uh, Petra, maybe. Uh, yeah. Would you want to talk about register? I can talk about register. Yeah, just to clarify the register issues. Yeah. Okay, so um, thank you, Senator. So the total electorate at the moment, um, and that would be the local um, combined total is three, around three and a half uh, million people on, on that. Um, as you say, 31 registration authorities manage the register for their own administrative areas. Um, we have been gathering some information um, from local authorities. Um, we previously had only counts, um, essentially, that were done um, annually, and then a count of a supplement um, at an electoral event. So we have been starting to gather some data on um, the, the quality of the information that local authorities have. Um, so as we're gathering um, information around PPSN, dates of birth, air codes, and so on, um, that we do have some information um, on that. Um, so we're gathering that information on a, on a sort of quarterly basis, largely to see how effective our registration campaigns are. Um, so we've had about 156,000 applications through the various um, portals. But on the, on the existing three million supposed voters who are registered, yep. like what validation of that has been conducted? S specific validation at this stage, we're leaving with registration authorities. and the we're local asking that, Yes, correct. And so right. they've done none? Um, no, we're asking them to go out into their communities and engage with their done communities. It? They have. We're, so, can, if I, they, yeah. they are working through. So, what we've provided them with is a legislative framework that gives them the full year to work with because often they had to stop and start. They had to register a draft and so on. So, what they can do now is they can engage all year round with, with their communities. Um, so, we provided that. Uh, we provided them with funding um, in April this year uh, to go out and do additional activities to try to get more people to register to update their details. Um, and to date, we've had, as I say, 156,000 updates to the register, um, and that's spread across all local authorities. 
Um, I'm sorry, can I, I interrupt yeah. you? It sounds like you've done a lot of work in this space. Would it be possible for you to just give us a report on the extent of the work, the funding that's been provided, the local authorities that have engaged, and what they've actually done? Because I'm going to run out of time here. Yeah, thanks. And then the other question about the, <coughs> the officers in the polling yeah. stations. Uh, the officers yeah. in the polling stations. So um, they were recruited by each of the individual returning officers. There's 18 returning officers, I think it is, the latest count nationwide, covering... What, and what qualifications do they need? The, the presiding officers and poll clerks. The people who are recruited who, to who, man the polling none, stations? None to my... Uh, that they're, mm. they're recruited by the returning officers mm. to act as presiding do officers and Do they need to be able clerks. to read or write? Well, well, look, it's a matter, as I said, for the returning, returning officers. officers. I, I, you're this. confirming what I know, Barry. Like, yeah. the, the reality of it is, is there's no qualifying criteria. No. And then when it comes to actually operating the polling stations and ensuring the validity of what's taking place in the ballot box. They, they could be people who can neither communicate verbally or in any way with, yeah. with others. Well, and it's entirely on them, entirely on them to take action to ensure that there isn't a voter impersonation taking place. It is entirely on them to engage a guard and ask a guard to arrest somebody who's engaging in voter impersonation. So, this is, a real, this is a real weakness in our electoral process. And that's before we get into all of the other complicated areas of um, campaigning. Well, maybe if I can be helpful here, um, there are a couple of functions um, here that the oncoming you have which may be helpful um, here. I mean, we obviously have oversight of the electoral register as well. So um, all of the registration authorities, the local authorities will be reporting to oncoming you every year on the state and the completeness and the accuracy of the register, it is our job to get into the undergrowth um, in, in relation to those figures. And my, my colleague, Tim, um, who will be available to talk to you about this perhaps afterwards, but um, is really getting stuck into the detail about Great. what that really means on the ground. And on the second uh, point, on Comishoon have responsibility after every election to conduct a review of the administration of that election. If the issue that you have identified is um, is a very real one, and I've no reason to, to, to doubt you um, here, then it's our job to um, to find that and call it out, you know, and to but that's, prescribe that's, remedies that's, to that's, it. That's, that's that's there. Like I mean, it, it's it's public information that basically the people who are manning our polling stations have no qualifications. They have no qualifications. They don't even need to be able to speak English or Irish. That's, that's the reality, you know. Now, we can do a post-electoral review of it if we want, but let's just be honest with the public. That's the context within which our ballot boxes and our democracy is operating. I think that's a serious red flag. And I think we need to do something about it before there's another election. Sure. Uh, so, uh, Chair, yeah, whatever, just... Uh, just <coughs> To make the point, and just to be clear, obviously I said that it is the responsibility of a returning officer to recruit their staff. Um, traditionally, um, a large, large cohort of that staff come from local authority staff, or indeed from the core services staff that uh, where, where returning officers, you know, operate in their in their day jobs. So, ju just to make that point, I, I think I think that's a valid point, Barry, and, and I agree with you. Traditionally, that is the case, mm. but we are full employment in Ireland. We're at full employment. There isn't a sector in the country that isn't struggling to recruit. Every profession, good professions, but good pensionable jobs. So, you have to ask, how important is our democracy? How important is the job that we're asking them to do? To give a minimum of 16 hours, to deal with the public, and to protect our democracy. I think we need to reflect on this. Thanks. It's just... Uh... My experience now of polling stations is the returning officer and presiding officer so have been really good, very, very good, very competent and always able to answer any questions at the time. We probably all have different experiences of it, but take note of your point on it. Thank you, Chair. And thank you, uh, Senator Scott. And we can, we can obviously, with the Electoral Commission now uh, in this space, we have always provided a, a full uh, manual for 
uh, presiding officers and protests in terms of, you know, uh, setting out what their duties are, because they are. You're right, they're very uh, onerous and very, you know, can be detailed. In relation if, if you keep in mind, there's 85 presiding officers, all of which will be drawn from the public service. So they will all be educated, qualified people with plenty of experience. But within each polling station, you've got multiple tables, you've got multiple officers. And traditionally, the political parties would put people in. Now, that, tra that tradition, you know, ended quite a long time ago. And you'd have some level of, let's say, independent or quasi-independent, let's say, observation of what was going on in a polling station. But I can speak from a Dublin experience that that does not take place and has not taken place for quite a number of elections in Dublin. And if you've got people who are, you know, unqualified to be fair to them, they're, they're giving up their time, but they're, 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 they, they might as well be just a warm pulse in, to some respects. Okay. So it's a serious issue. Thanks. It's a serious issue in our polling stations.